Hi everyone. So the Gephi tutorial that's online is really good, but now that Gephi has been updated a couple times, it is not exactly accurate. We're currently on version 0.9 and that was made for 0.7 and I've noticed in my classes that it's often confusing to students when things aren't in the right place. So basically what I'm going to do here is give you a video version of the Gephi tutorial that's online. I also have slides that cover the same material that they have but with the updated interface. And so one thing that we're going to do is start with instead of downloading the Les Miserables file that's in that tutorial, you can see that it's actually provided here for you as a sample. You certainly can still download it and just go to File and Open, but you can also just click on Les Mis here in the welcome window. Once you click that, you get this import report. This happens anytime you open any graph file. And what you see here is the graph type Sometimes you can pick different types here. So this is an undirected graph. It's actually indicated that it's that in the file that we're opening. So you can't choose directed from this list, but sometimes you'll be able to. So when you're opening a file, sometimes it will come up as directed and you'll want to make it undirected. You can change that here. We also see the number of nodes and edges. Usually there's not really much you have to do here except maybe change the graph type. And so when you're done, click OK and then you're gonna see this graph open. This is all nicely formatted and beautiful. What I'm gonna do really quick is switch it back to what you might get if you had just opened that file so we can see how the layout and the coloring works. But what you're seeing here is the nice layout that you get when you open the sample. Okay, so this is the Gephi datasets site, and if we scroll through here, you can see there's a whole bunch of different files. This one is the Les Mis dataset, and so what we're going to do is download that, and that's going to let us get a kind of messy graph to start with that we can turn into something pretty. So we're going to download that, and uh, it, this is going into my downloads file. We're then Okay, so now we're back in Gephi, and I'm going to go to File and click Open, and that's going to let us find our file here. Now again, I just double-clicked on that. We see exactly the same message that we had before. Uh, now we have a few different types, so we're going to pick Undirected here, because this is an undirected graph, and click OK. And now we get the same mess that you will see if now what we have here is this kind of random looking graph. Uh, the main features that you want to know here is that you can zoom using the mouse wheel or if you have a touchpad with two fingers by doing kind of up and down like you're scrolling up and down that'll zoom the graph. If it gets out of scope or like off the screen you can click this magnifying glass which will recenter it and keep it kind of as zoomed as possible. The next thing we want to do is actually lay out this graph. It's a mess right now, and so we want to lay it out in a way so we can kind of see what's going on a little better. The layout panel's over here, and there's a bunch of different algorithms in the list. Uh, the Gephi tutorial uses Force Atlas, which is what we're going to use. There's a lot of different properties down here. I tend to just actually leave these at the default values. But let's look at how to change it. Uh, in the original Gephi tutorial, they have us change the repulsion strength to 10,000, which gives us a more stretched out graph. You just double click to change the value, and then when you're done typing, hit enter. And you can do that with any of the features in here. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and click run, and that's gonna give us a laid out graph. You can see it still jiggles a little bit, and down here it still looks like it's running. It'll do that for a while, but once it looks stable like this, you can always just click stop. Now, here's where things get a little bit different than they are in the current Gephi tutorial. What we want to do now is do some coloring and sizing, and that happens in the appearance window up here. All the features in the original Gephi tutorial are still here, they just look a little bit different, and in fact, I've even seen it with people who have the same version of Gephi but are running on different platforms. For some reason, these appear a little bit differently. So don't be afraid to kind of play around in the appearance panel and try clicking on the different tabs to find what you're looking for up there. So. What I did here is I clicked on the nodes tab because we're going to adjust nodes and then over here this is a little different than previous versions. There are a few options about what we want to do. 
if you mouse over, you'll get these little tool tips. So this is, I think, supposed to look like an artist's palette, and that lets you change color. This one with the concentric circles lets you change the size. So if we click nodes and then the palette, that lets us change the color. We have then three options down here. Unique, which means you're just going to set one color in this case. Uh, partition, which is if you've got different clusters, which we'll look at how to do. Or ranking, where you sort of have a scale. And so we can pick from this list. Uh, degree is how many edges are connected to a node. And so what this is basically going to do is change on a color scale what are the color of the nodes. The ones with the higher degree will be a darker green in this case. Uh, I just want to show you what that's going to look like. If we click apply, you can see we've got this really high degree node in the middle that's really dark green and the rest are pretty light. If you want to change those colors, there's a few options. You can click this little color palette thing over here and there's a few options. If you go over de default, it will show you some scales that are already built in. So for example, we could do this red, yellow, blue one. And if we click apply, then you can see they're kind of red on the edges towards blue in the middle. Uh, we can do invert and that flips it around. And if we click apply, you can see that has changed that way. But you also can do it yourself. So if you mouse over the color line here, maybe I want to change that center color. You can just click on the triangle and eventually it will pull up a palette. So maybe we want it to go from blue, say to green, to red. So we'll pick that bright green and click OK. And now you can see our scale has changed. You can click on any of the triangles to change the color, and you can click on the timeline to add new triangles to get new colors if you want. So we could go, uh, for example, from like a purple to a blue and kind of make our own little rainbow here. We'll do one more with a yellow and click apply and then we get this sort of uh, color rainbow going into the middle. So that's how you adjust colors. Now right now we can only do it by degree but we can run some statistics in order to get new ways to be able to calculate this. First I'm just going to put us back to these preset values to make it look a little more sane. Now let's look at some ways that we can get other statistics that we can then use to change color and size. Over here on the right, there's a tab called Statistics. So click on that. And there's a whole bunch of different statistics that you can use. We want to compute between this centrality for this next step. And to get that, you actually have to run the network diameter statistics. So just click Run there. And this is going to give you a little menu here. Just click OK. And when that finishes running, it's going to bring up a little report like this. You can just close that. And now we've got those statistics. We don't see any of it once we close the report, but if we come back over here to look at the coloring, now we have a bunch more options in our list. We're going to leave the color like it is, and instead we're going to click on the size option up here, click on ranking, and then pick betweenness centrality. So what we're doing here is changing the size of the nodes based on betweenness centrality. We're going to give a minimum size and a maximum size. So how small should the smallest node be and how big should the biggest one be? And the smaller ones are going to be the ones with lower between this and the bigger ones will have higher between this. Go ahead and click apply and now we can see a much different graph. Okay, so once we have this, now we can do a few more things. For example, now that we've got these big nodes that are kind of overlapping, we could lay it out again. There's an option over here, Adjust by Sizes, and if we click that and rerun it, now Okay, so the next thing we want to do is Community Detection, which allows us to see what clusters of nodes kind of belong together. Uh, to do that, over in the Statistics panel, there's a Modularity option. Click Run for that, and it's going to give you a message that looks like just click OK to that and it's going to run and it'll give you a report when it's done. Go ahead. So now what we want to do is use those communities to change the color. So we're going to come back up here to Appearance. We're going to click on Nodes and then we're going to click the color icon. And now we see three options here and we're going to click on Partition, which means we have kind of categories. And from the pull down, 
we'll choose modularity class, which is what we just got when we ran the community detection algorithm. This gives us the different communities. They just have a number. You can see what percentage of the nodes fall into each community. And if you click and hold your mouse down over a color, you get a little palette where you can drag around and when you find the color you like, just lift up your mouse and let go. Once you have, actually, you should just start with the default colors and then change them after that because you don't really know what they're going to look like. Uh, so once you've got your colors, click a to turn on the node labels, you can just click the T down here, but there's some more settings that might be helpful. Here you can see there's a little uh, pull down, and if you click node size, you'll see that the size of your labels matches the size of the nodes, and if you move this slider, it will change the size. So we can leave it like that. Next, we want to filter the network. If you come back over here, there's the filters tab. And from here, there is a bunch of filters here that we're going to drag down to this lower section. So to match with the old Gephi tutorial, we're going to go under Topology and pick Degree Range. We're going to drag that down into Queries to where it says Drag Filter here. And now you have a dynamic filter, so you can drag this little slider. And when you stop, you can see the graph changes. And if you apply Filter, you see it changes the graph out here. We're just going to take it up to two. Sometimes if, you, uh, if you've got a really big range here, you know, if it goes up to thousands, it can be hard to drag it just to a number. And a secret hidden thing is that if you click this number, it looks like it's just highlighted, but you can actually type a number in there and hit enter, and that will give you your filter. And so now we have the graph filtered, so we're only seeing nodes who have a degree greater than two. So finally, we're going to look at how to export the graphs in a nice way. You can click the Preview tab all the way up at the top. Uh, this is going to look blank. It doesn't have anything by default. If that concerns you, just click the Refresh button, and you'll get your graph. Uh, there's a ton of options over here on the side. And so we're going to click the one that says Show Labels. And anytime you click something over here, you have to refresh. and uh, now we can see here's our labels, sort of like we had them set up before. And when you're happy, then you can click export. There's a few different formats, and if you click that down here, you can pick the file format here. I like PNG. Give it a name. And click save, and you're done. And then finally, to save your project, go to the file menu and click save. What this is going to allow you to do is save all the settings that you have. So it'll save the colors and the layout and everything. Um, so we could save this as lemiz.gephi. And then if someone opens that file, they will get a beautiful version of the graph, having done all of the work that you've done already. And so that's it. That's basically an updated version of the online Gephi tutorial with new features.